Welcome back. This week we are going to tar the foundation. The first thing to mention is today is April 7th, and for those of you who are not keenly aware, April 7th is International Beaver Day. And for Beaverlick Homestead, I guess that means one thing. Let's see the intro again. So you may remember from one of the earlier videos that we tarred the lower part of the foundation uh, several months ago and, and backfilled it. So that's what you see at the bottom there is the, the top of the tar from the first round that we did uh, so that we could backfill and finish building the wall. Uh, and now that the foundation is complete, I'm gonna be tarring uh, the rest of the foundation and um, getting it ready for uh, more backfill. Uh, I showed up today without my extension pole, um, so I'm doing it all shorthanded. Um, the only really drawback to that is it's a little bit more bending and stretching. Um, and of course, there's a little bit more uh, backsplash from the tar. So uh, I walked out of uh, the day today with um, some, some pretty sticky arms. Uh, felt a little bit like an Exxon Valdez duck, uh, except that I did this to myself. Um, so uh, next time uh, I'll have the extension pole, uh, extension pole uh, to help out. Um, I usually go up and down uh, on my first pass, and then I always like to come back and go full horizontally on each row. Does a couple of things. One, it just uh, smooths out the tar, so it's a good, uh, steady consistency throughout. Um, but it also just gives me an opportunity to look for any additional uh, cracks or spots that I missed and uh, look at it from a little bit of a different uh, perspective. I would recommend a pretty low pile roller. Uh, you don't need a lot. Um, the high pile rollers uh, don't do anything except cause more a backsplash and spray when you're when you're rolling it on. Um, so uh, definitely go with low pile. Um, I'm skipping the upper the the highest uh, row there. Um, not for any real reason right now, except that I don't want to get all the tar in my hair. Uh, so I'm going to come back and do that a, a little bit later. So cinder blocks are typically eight inches high as they are here. Uh, and so that the top row is uh, about where the ground will come. So you, you want a 10 inch, um, you want the ground to come up uh, 10 inches below the top of the foundation and then grade back at, uh, at least uh, 10 feet from there. So that's how we'll think about it uh, when, we're, when we start to do the, the backfill. So this is the product I'm using. Uh, it's roof foundation coating. And um, there's obviously a lot of different products you can use. Some are much more expensive than others. Um, there's a lot of newer uh, types of uh, materials that they have. Uh, but at the end of the day, they've been using tar for a really long time. Uh, and it, it works just fine. Uh, it's a less expensive uh, solution. And uh, certainly for our um, application, uh, it, it's going to do what we need. What I'm working on now is really just the first coat. Uh, I will put a second coat over this entire uh, foundation. Um, tar does a great job of filling in very small, like pinhole, and you know even slightly larger uh, gaps in the mortar. Um, but you might be able to see on the upper right corner there, uh, some of the mortar has chipped out uh, near the top. I'm going to come back there with some tubes of mortar and uh, fill those in uh, and let them set and dry, and, and then I'll uh, tar that uh, once once all those are done. I'll also find some other spots um, and do the same thing all the way around. Anything anything that's too big for the tar to really fill and set in. Um, here I'm coming back with a brush uh, and doing some of the finer work that the roller can't get into. So having a good roofing brush on hand uh, is definitely a good idea. So I'm back today with my extension uh, for the roller, which is makes things much easier. Uh, so I'll be able to do the lower part of the uh, wall with that. Um, as a reminder, we'll have a full walkout basement on the other side of the house. So I'll be tarring this entire wall, um, really none of the back wall, except for what we did on the lower part um, before the initial backfill, uh, and then do doing sort of a diagonal uh, on the side walls um, and there it goes. So the extension that I brought was a, a fiberglass pole with a plastic thread, um, and tar is too heavy for that, uh, which I learned. And now I'm just kind of confused and looking around going, all right, what am I going to do? 
Uh, I have a scraper here that I used to scrape off some stuff. I was thinking maybe I can get the pole out of that, but it's not the same type. So I'm, I'm really back to uh, doing the tar without the, or doing the roller without the extension. Um, so next time I'll have a wooden uh, extension uh, with a aluminum thread uh, pole that's much more sturdy. Uh, and that uh, is uh, definitely the way to go. So lesson learned on that one. So as I was saying, I will put a uh, sort of a diagonal line of tar on the sides, uh, really just as a guide for the uh, my guy who does the bulldozing and will help me uh, grade around the house. After that, I'm going to end up tarring uh, the entire foundation uh, all the way to the top uh, once we have um, the mo more of the backfill in. Uh, and mostly that's just because uh, one uh, looks, I just think it'll look nicer. Um, it will protect uh, the foundation from some moisture uh, all the way around. And for anything that's exposed above ground, I will be uh, doing some form of siding, uh, whether it's extending the board and batten uh, down over the foundation or, or doing some other form of, of siding uh, that can um, complement it uh, well. If you caught the Fight Club inspired inserts, uh, this is what it is. It's the Goo Gone. Um, so when you have your forearms covered in tar, uh, this is definitely the way to go. Uh, this stuff just melts the tar right off. Uh, Dawn detergent does not work. So I recommend you, if you're working with the stuff to get something like that Goo Gone. So for both the bottom section and this upper section, uh, I ended up uh, buying about eight five gallon buckets of this tar and uh, they're about 60 bucks a bucket. So uh, what is that? $480 uh, for, uh, to, in order to found, uh, tar the entire foundation. So uh, again, pretty reasonable uh, solution and um, just not that much effort. It's very straightforward, very meditative process of just working through um, uh, and methodically going and trying to cover up every every little bit that you can. Uh, the second coat will take care of everything and you'll be left with a really protected foundation, which is of course the point. And at the end of the day when you're done, uh, if you know you're going to come back, just use an empty bucket and drop your roller and your brush in them and seal it up and that'll stay good for quite a while. So it's a good way to keep your stuff fresh without having to replace your brush and your, your roller every day. Uh, but I would suggest having a an extra roller or two on hand um, because uh, you'll you'll definitely need more than one to do the full job. This turned out to be a really beautiful day to do this. I uh, it was about seventy five degrees. It was cloudy, a um, little humid, but still a, a really good day to do to work with tar. Um, it's not nearly as nice when it's eighty five, super sunny, uh, with the sun reflecting off that tar. So uh, I really picked a nice day to get this done. And so this is what it looks like with everything mostly complete. Um, I did not do the diagonal on the right side there because there's some those mortar spots I want to fill in and let them set before I do that. Uh, but on this left side here, you can see the diagonal sort of following from the top down to uh, the grade on, on the front. Uh, it looks pretty steep, and it is. Um, I don't know if the grade will end up being that steep. Uh, this is where I like to really rely on my uh, graders and the, the bulldozer guy that I work with, who's fantastic. Uh, he'll help me uh, sort of think about the best way to do that. Um, plus, we will only do an initial grading uh, for now, and then once the house is more complete, that's when we'll make a final determination on the driveway and, and other pieces. But that's it for today. Uh, thanks a lot, and see you next time.